Siloxis is enterprise class project management software to help manage your project portfolios, collaborate with your team, and stay on top of them. In this video, I'll walk you through five steps that will help you get started and get the most out of your trial account. First, we'll see how information is organized in Siloxis, followed by exploring the dashboard and the top navigation panel. Then we'll see how you can create your first project and add tasks to it. Next, I'll switch roles and show you how team members can work smarter and be more productive with their assignments. Finally, we'll see how to get support whenever you need it. So let's get started with understanding how everything is organized. At the top level, you have projects. Projects can have tasks, discussions, documents, and even bugs, risks, or to-dos. Tasks can further have resources, time and expense items, progress updates, and also file attachments. The dashboard is the screen that you see when you first log in. It's your source of real-time status and information about your work items. We've set up your trial dashboard with predefined reports and populated your account with sample data, which you can use, modify, or even delete. Each report has been configured with you as the project manager. The key thing to remember is that any view you see in Siloxis is a report. This reduces your learning curve and boosts user adoption since you only need to learn one thing. We'll cover reports in detail in another video, but I will demonstrate a couple of things while we're here. For any report, you can customize columns or group them using the column picker. This avoids creating several report definitions for different users. You can also limit the data that is presented in the report by using dynamic filters. This is a team member's dashboard. One can clearly see the tasks, to-dos, bugs, and discussions all from here. Or here's a more visual one for your executives. They can see how projects are aligned with their portfolios or take note of any cost overruns. 80% of your actions can be performed from the dashboard. Hover over any element to bring up a three-line menu that lets you perform quick actions on it. Keep an eye out for this menu when you need to perform specific actions. The navigation pane on the top provides quick access to all modules. Creating a project is fairly easy. The form, as you see, is organized into a number of tabs. This enables you to logically step through your data entry. For example, if you use financials or portfolio parameters, you'd enter them in the Advanced tab. For now, we'll just key in a name for this project, select a client, and move on. With our interactive Gantt, you can easily resize and move tasks, assign resources, add milestones, drag dependencies, and even push them out. You can quickly change your project views to see related discussions, bugs, or risks. Again, these are reports that you can create. To see the daily workload of your resources, you can access the resources load chart from the menu. You can easily identify and fix over allocations from here. Let's now switch over to a team member's role. As shown earlier, the dashboard has been set up and configured by the admin. Here I can see my tasks, to-dos, discussions, and bugs all at once. I can just hover over this task to bring up its three-line menu. Here I can start a timer or quickly report progress on it. I can also attach documents. Let's add an update to this task. I can enter the current status of my task, expressed as a percentage of its duration, and a brief comment for it. I can also enter time and send it for approval to my manager. Teams can also use the weekly timesheet to report time divided on project and non-project activities at the same time. I can save these entries as a draft for later submission, or directly send it all for approval. In this last segment, I'll show you how to get help. Anytime you need assistance, our Help Center is the place to get answers to your questions. You can access our comprehensive user guide or participate in our forum. You can also watch our two-minute explainer videos or search our frequently asked questions. 
If you still can't get it resolved, you can contact our support folks. So there you have it. Five steps to a successful trial evaluation. Happy planning.